Hello and welcome. I'm Natalie MacDonald and you're joining us here at Super Return Asia. Here in the studio with me now is Florian Kohler of Obvium. Florian, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. No problem at all. Now, first off, let's really kick things off with taking a look at how do LPs approach investing within the Asia space? Well, that's a really good question. Um, you know, for us, we're a fund of funds based in Bern, Switzerland, so we don't actually have people on the ground here in Asia. So we have to really step back and take a holistic view of the, of, of, of the space. You know, as venture investors in funds, we've invested across you know Africa, Latin America, and Asia. And for us, the one thing that we've learned throughout the years is successful venture investing requires something specific, um, and it's the ecosystem. So if you look at the historical um, background of venture investing in the U.S., you know there's a reason why two thirds of the global venture capital money goes to the U.S., and there's a reason why 40 to 50 percent of that's in Silicon Valley, because of the ecosystem. You have a pool of talent. You have the entrepreneurs who are there. You have the companies who are there. You have the you know the universities. You have the investors, and they all work together in a symbiotic format. And there's a reason why everyone keeps on going back to Silicon Valley, it's just that's where everyone else is. So when you, when you look at um, venture investing in Asia, for us, we say, okay, well, where is that ecosystem? Because a, a venture capital fund is a little bit different than a, a late stage buyout fund. You need to have this ecosystem of support in terms of other entrepreneurs, of service providers, of these financiers, of these companies, where people come out of, and essentially where the talent comes from. And in Asia, you know, we see a little bit of that. We see it in India. We see it in, you know, in the Bangalore, a little bit in Chennai. You see a bit in, in Delhi. Um, you're starting to see a lot of it in China, in Beijing, in Shanghai. And in Southeast Asia, you're starting to see a little bit more, let's say, in Singapore. Now, the, the question is, when we look at it, um, for, for us to make a decision on back in a, a venture capital fund manager, we, we look at the, the, the fund structure and we say, well, okay, a fund, a typical VC fund is going to invest in 12 to 15 companies. But venture capital companies, a lot of them, they're very binary. You know, it's either a success or a failure. So they sometimes they need to invest even more, 15 to 20 companies. And for them to find 15 or 20 good companies, they have to look at probably 10 times that amount of companies. So for uh, a typical VC fund that's going to invest in 15 companies, they have to look at 150, maybe 200 decent sized companies. Now, if you were to ask me, is that ecosystem, is that, that, that pipeline of companies available here in Hong Kong? I'm not sure, you know, someone would have to convince me. But they won't have to convince me about Bangalore or Shanghai or Beijing. So for us, that's probably the first thing that we look at is basically, is there an ecosystem that can generate that pipeline, the funnel of, of good companies, whether it be in the, in the tech, biotech, or software space. And then when we identify where that pipeline and that, 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 that ecosystem is, then we look at the fund managers who are in that market. So in that respect, what, what makes a VC stand out to you then? So I mean, the, the ideal, obvious um, aspect would be a track record. You know, if a VC comes to us and they obviously can demonstrate that they've generated X amount of eggs. That historical value. historical value, you know, that they've shown they can generate cash on cash, not just the valuation, the cash on cash. You know, that's the first thing. Now, the, the second thing is basically, you know, we look at the people. Because, you know, venture capital fund managers are a little bit different than late stage growth capital buyout or even more mature company managers, and that venture capital managers, they really need to demonstrate that they, they're entrepreneurs themselves, and that they understand entrepreneurial mindset. I mean, a, a typical venture capital manager that we probably would not consider be an uh, ex-investment banker who spent some time in the US or UK and is moving back to India or China because they want to do VC investing. You know, I'm not saying it doesn't work, it might work, but it's probably it's a, it's a harder sell to convince us. We're more convinced by the manager who's either has been an entrepreneur himself, has built a company, has gone through the trouble and, and the pain of building a company, or has been maybe in the space for 20 years and working with these entrepreneurs and, and helping them build companies. But at the end of the day, you know, um, a, a fund manager, a VC fund manager, needs to be really passionate about building companies. You know, they're not looking to, to invest and flip a deal in a year or two. They're looking to invest in a company you know, add value, sit on the board, mentor some of these entrepreneurs. You know, and, and I'm not saying that all these entrepreneurs are young people. Some of these entrepreneurs could be 40, 50 year old people who are leaving industry to set up their own business. But the venture capitalist needs to be able to work with them and add some value. And that's not something that's very easy to find. But when you do find it, you know, those in our experience are the good type of venture capital players. So you've considered your region, you've considered your VC. 
sort of, I guess, the, the next step in that process. How does the due diligence process differ in Asia to, to elsewhere? It, it's, it's a very good question. And, you know, especially for us, since we're based in Switzerland and we don't actually um, have a team on the ground here, we, we fly out to the region quite often. So it takes a little bit longer, I'd say, for us to get comfortable with a, a fund manager than if we were actually based here and seeing them once a week. At the end of the day, it comes on the people. So our due diligence, especially in the VC space, focuses a lot on the team and the people behind the fund. Now, that can vary in, in certain degrees, probably depend on the region. If we're looking at maybe a Chinese VC manager, in China what you tend to see is, um, you don't usually see a team of three or four partners who are all equal, make equal decisions, as you probably see in Silicon Valley. In China, it's more there's one key man, one star, um, with maybe you know a strong supporting team of other partners built behind him. Well, in India, you might see the more of the American model where you see two or three you know, fund managers or partners who've been working together for several years and they, they take kind of equal, equal roles. So what we do is when we look at the due diligence process, you know, we spend a lot of time on those people. Um, we look at their track records in detail. I mean, we do a lot of reference calls. For example, you know, we're not on the ground in the region, so typical VC fund, I would probably make anywhere from 30 to 40 reference calls. I've had one case, I've done 50 reference calls. And that's calling everyone from current entrepreneurs to former entrepreneurs to fellow board members who sit on the, on the fund, and obviously their fellow investors. And the idea is that we really need to get comfortable that this fund manager, um, whether it be in India, be in China, be in Singapore, is is able to well you know source the deals that um, you know entrepreneurs actually want to work with them because there are a lot of VC players it is a quite competitive space so we have to be be convinced that he can actually get the deals and that when he gets the deals he's actually going to do to add some value to it and you know he understands the long the long game but then he's passionate and wants to build that company so we spend a lot of time on that on the people and and I think that's why. Investing in venture funds is a lot different than investing in a typical buyout fund, which is more financial, which is, is, is the, the profile of the fund manager are more the investment, ex-investment bankers, is more financial engineering, it's more probably more of a passive role versus the venture fund investor is very much more hands-on. So to get that comfort, um, it takes time. So our, our due diligence process focuses on building that relationship with the manager and typically, it can be honest with you, it could be anywhere from a year or a year and a half sometimes before we get comfortable enough with a manager before we actually decide to, to move forward. I, I've rarely seen in any of the funds that we've decided to invest in that we've spent less than six months with a manager. And that means coming out here several times, visiting them, visiting their companies, them come to meet us in Switzerland, we meet in different, in different areas. And only when we really get really comfortable with the people, then we decide to, uh, to move forward. Florian, thank you so much for your insights today. It's a pleasure. Excellent. Thank you very much. That is all we've got time for right now. Our many thanks to Florian Colette for his insights into the VC sector. Do stay tuned for more insights from Super Return Asia. You can find us using the hashtag SRAsia. For now, though, it is goodbye.